Okay, very good afternoon. My name is Iqbal. Um, I'm a nephrologist from UITM. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to uh, listen to this talk. The title of my talk is Making Sense of Expanded Hemodialysis or HDX. Uh, so what is expanded hemodialysis or what is HDX? First of all, I just want to say that this is not a marketing term or word. It's actually expanded hemodialysis basically means hemodialysis using a high retention onset or a middle cut of dialyzer and this is the aim of my talk today. Okay, disclosure, I received or will be receiving a grant from Baxter I hope but I have to say that I am an extracorporeal therapy enthusiast. We have two fully HDF units, one in Sungai Buloh and one in Puncha Alam and also one fully HDX unit in Selayang and again I have to state this is not bragging just to back up that statement, okay? All right, I'm going to start off with this. This is basically our simple view on dialysis or almost everybody's simple view of dialysis. So what is dialysis? Dialysis is basically the movement of solutes and water between the two compartments, which is separated by a semi-permeable membrane like the picture you see there, okay? I, th I think everybody sees it as a, a flat sheet of paper with beautiful holes there. And the toxins uh, or the solutes move by either diffusion, convection, or adsorption, and that is correct. And of course, everybody knows that the bigger the pores or the holes, the more solutes you remove, okay? Now, this is true. However, the kinetic model or, or, or the movement of solutes across a sample membrane is more complicated than that. Okay, I'm going to start off by saying that the dialyzer is the heart of dialysis. So, however, it is underappreciated, not given enough recognition, and it doesn't get the credit it deserves, okay? The dialyzer has undergone many evolutions since it's first introduced. I'm talking about the hollow fibers uh, since in 1960s and 1970s. So, and this is because of the advance in the materials we use as well as the production, i.e. the spinning techniques. Now, again, the dialyzer is an engineering marvel and we refer to it as hollow fiber membranes uh, where it's basically micro thin tubules within semi-porous walls, okay? So you can see that if you open up the caps of the dialyzer there, you will see that uh, you'll find this bunch of fine looking strands which looks like spaghetti or threads. Now there's about approximately about 20,000 fibers in that bundle and if you look at the hollow fibers or single hair strand more closely and of course you have to use a electron microscopy, so have to sort of put that in perspective how small these things are. You can see that they actually look like straws, you know, with holes in the middles and there are holes and these holes are where the blood flows, okay? So um, these hollow fibers, so basically are micro thin tubules with semi-porous walls and uh, these pores allow water and solutes to flow freely uh, through their fibrous walls, okay? Again, this is to show how much advanced you know, it has been seen. So this is this difference in structure between the cellulose hollow fibers versus the synthetic one. As you can see, the synthetic usually made of polysulfone or polyamide. And you can see the obvious architectural difference between the walls of the hollow fibers uh, in the past and also in the present. Is again, the current dialyzer membranes, it basically has three uh, structures or three layers. And these walls uh, structures are basically designed to increase the efficiency of solute clearance as well as ultrafiltration capabilities of these hollow fibers, okay? So the inner skin layer, uh, which contains pores to allow small molecules and middle molecules to pass through whilst retaining essential proteins, essentially albumin, okay? And then you can see that the intermediate layer looks like, uh, which looks like basically like a, a sponge or a bone, you know, uh, provides strong structural support to this structure, to the hollow fibers, and also facilitates the transport of water and solutes across the membranes, okay? And you can see, you know, the finger-like structure gives it a mechanical stability, enable it minimal resistance to water and solute transport, you know, due to its openness. Lah. So the other important layer is the outer layer, okay? And the outer layer is designed to prevent bacterial byproducts or endotoxins uh, in the dialysate from entering across into the blood. So what happens is the surface are very sticky and it causes the endotoxins and the byproducts to stick to the surface. Another thing, so this is another picture showing the pores on the inner surface of the membrane and, and, I can sh and you can see it does not look like a perfect flat sheet with 
beautiful, perfect, circular holes. Okay, I would say it looks like a roti jala. Lah. So you can see the only thing we can see there is the big blood cells there which cannot pass through this sieve or net or roti jala. Okay, so remember the complexity of the membrane is not like a simple sieve. It really looks like a uh, roti jala there, which I can say it's also the curry also looks delicious. Okay, what is a dialysis top without talking about uremic toxins? So uremic toxins can be divided into small, middle, large, and protein-bound molecules. Middle molecules are usually classified, you know, if they're more than 500 daltons, and these can actually accumulate in end-stageal failure patients and exert many toxic effects, lah. Okay, so the retention of these middle molecules is associated with the development of uh, you know inflammatory condition cardiovascular disease chronic ckd mineral bone disease anemia it can affect immune your immune system it causes amyloidosis of course uh, and it causes protein energy wasting so therefore a better clearance of these middle molecules you know would improve the long term outcome of patients with end-stageal failure okay so the dialyzer's objective if you were uh, wanted to design a dialyzer it would be something that we have a selective removal of these middle molecules while retaining albumin. Okay, I have to say, when during this talk, it is important also that when we talk about solute clearance, we are only talking about convection, okay? We're not talking about diffusion or adsorption. And it has been shown that the kinetics of solute transfer does not follow diffusion, okay? Otherwise, you just have a straight line, okay? Uh, of course, it does not... Okay, the, the, the permeability of solutes also de not only depends on the molecular weight, but also the size of the pores, ultrafiltration rate, and membrane surface area, okay? And the evidence is this. This graph shows you two things. Number one, as the molecules become bigger, the less it is cleared. And in fact, it follows, you can see the difference between the uh, cellulose and the new synthetic ones. You can see that the new synthetic ones follows a nice S-curve which is, resembles the glomerular basement membrane. So point number one I was trying to make all this thing is the dialyzer membrane is not just a flat piece of surface with holes in them. It is made up of layers of complex and unbelievable technology. The aim of a dialyzer is to remove middle molecules whilst retaining albumin and this is achieved by convection. So this terminology is important for us. So this, this idea, point number one, is very important for us to go on to our next um, uh, talk, okay? So to understand about dialysis, it's important for us to understand these definitions that I've put. Uh, and of course, the terminology is also important for us to familiarize, to enable us to, to classify the membrane on basically to understand HDX. So I've put a few there. So I'm just going to talk very briefly on high flux versus low flux, the sieving coefficient, the sieving curve, uh, the molecular weight cut off, the molecular weight retention onset, the pore size and pore density, as well as back filtration and water quality as well. So when somebody says, what type of dialysis are you using? Okay, we don't say biocompatible or high efficiency because this is standard practice already. We can use single or reusable, talk to it like that. Uh, or we can say high flux versus low flux. We can also say that a dialyzer has a high cut off uh, for example, Therolite, I'm not sure whether you were around there. This is also by Gamro, which was designed to remove more bigger free light chains. Or even plasma exchange, basically. It's, it's a type of dialyzer, but you know you can actually remove immunoglobulin, so very big uh, molecules. And finally, HDF, more modality rather than type of membrane. And then finally, you have your high retention onset, medium cut-off, or HDX. Basically, this is interchange interchangeable, okay, dialyzers. And this is what... Hopefully, we can, I can make you understand what is it, okay? So, very quickly, high flux. Flux is a measure of ultrafiltration uh, or the hydraulic permeability aim at achieving a high convective clearance. Membrane pore size, of course, bigger in high flux membranes to allow the water to pass through. It requires accurate volumetric control by the dialysis machine. So, uh, you've heard of the ultra coefficient, the KUF for high flux has to be more than 20 mils per minute. Now, flux uh, was originally classified by your ultrafiltration coefficient. However, it was subsequently classified according to beta-2 microglobulin clearance. So, uh, beta-2, you know, so a high flux membrane would have a sieving coefficient of more than 0 0.6 or at least 50% to 60%, okay? But these days, it's a lot more uh, when you're talking about high flux, okay? 
Sieving coefficient, what is it? So the, mem the permeability or the membrane passage of a solute is described uh, by the means of a sieving coefficient, lah, which is the ratio of the solute filtrate concentration uh, to the respective solute plasma concentration. Okay, so a sieving coefficient of 1 basically indicates free passage, lah. it's all filtrated, whereas sieving coefficient of 0 basically means that the solute cannot pass the membrane. Okay? Now, for a given membrane, each solute has its specific sieving coefficient. Okay? Now, you must understand the sieving curve. Okay? So, when you plot put the sieving coefficient versus the molecular weight size, you will get a sieving curve. Okay? Now, the aim is, of course, to achieve the S shape of the glomerular basement membrane. Okay? And as you can see, with the high flux membrane, you can see that the curve is shifted to the right and very close resemble the glomerular basement membrane okay so again so this is a sieving curve anything below is what we call the zone of permeability anything above the red zone the red zone there is zone of impermeability okay so would you want a curve to look like this you know a nice straight curve and then suddenly drops well no and I think number one because the glomerular basement membrane doesn't look, look like this so what we may assume is not all molecular weight molecules were made bad by God, okay? Molecular weight cutoff is a very uh, simple concept to understand. So the molecular size for which the sieving coefficient equals to 0 0.1 is the cutoff weight of the membrane, okay? And basically, it depends on the pore size. Lah. So the higher the cutoff, the more molecules can be removed, okay? So, of course, um, Okay, the molecular weight cutoff or the MWCO is relevant in understanding what will be lost from the membrane. Okay, so here you can see three different sieving uh, curves. The purple one is the high flux, the green is the high cutoff, and the orange is the high retention onset. So basically, of course, high cutoff is all about how big the pores are. So the high cutoff has the biggest uh, pores, and this will allow, as you can see, more uh, middle molecules or more molecules to be uh, filtrated out. However, you know, because the pore size are bigger than albumin, this means that although not all albumin will be lost, some albumin will be lost or a significant albumin will be lost if you use a high cut off a membrane. Okay? However, when you look at the HRO membrane and the high flux membrane, because the, high, the cut off is not above the albumin value, theoretically there should be no albumin loss or very uh, negligible loss of albumin seen. Okay, this is the concept that you need to understand or learn today, molecular weight retention onset. Okay, Molecular weight retention onset basically refers to the sieving coefficient where it's 0 0.9. Okay, That's the retention onset of the membrane. Okay, So the higher the molecular weight retention onset, larger molecules will be lost, filtrated. And as you can see by the, the, these two membranes, you can see that, you know, just by the high flux, you can see that the high flux membrane has a higher retention onset as compared to a flow, low flux. That means the area of permeability is higher because it's pushed to the right, okay? And it's more steeper, uh, which again follows the pattern of the glomerular basement membrane, okay? So again, just to remind you again, uh, the internal wall of the membrane, this is how it looks like. Again, it's not a beautifully cut holes in the membrane, it looks like that. It's not, in uni it's not uniform in size and distribution or density. Again, so how do you develop a high molecular weight retention onset or how do you determine the molecular weight retention onset of a membrane? Well, it de basically depends on the pore density and the size distribution. Okay, which are basically two main factors affecting the quantity and the spectrum of the solutes removed. Okay? So this is shown nicely in this graph. You can see that this is basically showing that the pore numbers and distributions are plotted against the pore size. Okay? You can see that when you look at graph number C, it has a wide spread and low numbers which is plotted against a wide variety of pore size. Okay? Whereas in A and B, although it has similar shape, uh, distribution of the B curve is more towards bigger size pores, okay? And this, you can see the difference in the sieving uh, curve or the sieving pattern of each membrane, where you can see that, you know, the A and B, of course, 
has a nice S-shaped curve, but B, as you can see, is more pushed to the right, as I said, and it's more similar to the glomerular basement membrane, and thus, you can see it has a higher zone of permeability, uh, especially with removing middle weight molecules. So again, showing you two different types of sieving curves or membranes with different molecular weight retention onset value. Okay? So if you have a higher retention onset value, you know, the curve will be pushed to the right as compared to a membrane with a lower retention onset value. Okay? So this is the summary of pore size and distribution or density that I'm talking about. You can see that you know, the blue one is basically the high flux membrane. Uh, the middle one is the middle cutoff and the green one is the high cutoff. Okay? And if you have a nice narrow and uh, big size distribution of the pores, you can actually determine or you can actually change the retention onset of the specific membrane and due to this so basically due to this uh, so the treatment of with using a middle cut of membranes expands the spectrum of uremic toxins that can be removed by just using hemodialysis and therefore this novel treatment modality is called expanded hemodialysis or HDX. Of course there are other factors in membrane design including membrane thickness of course the thinner it is the better and of course these membranes are actually reduced in the inner diameter and this maximizes internal filtration and increases shear rate and blood pressure drop and also it increases ultrafiltration as well. So this one expanded hemodialysis or HDX is actually a term which defines a treatment where a diffusion and convection are combined inside a hollow fiber dialyzer equipped with a high retention onset membrane and this term was actually coined by Professor Ronco in 2017. So using, by using a simple ultrafiltration control hemodialysis or just using dialysis, solute clearance in the spectrum of molecular weights traditionally retained with other techniques and membranes are basically increased or enhanced. This is a very important uh, concept to understand as well, the convective clearance Okay, results from the product of the ultrafiltration rate, the QF, and also the sieving coefficient of the selected to the sieving uh, permeability of the selected molecule. Okay, so an increase in convection can be achieved either number one, high flux membranes in HDF, or by high retention onset membranes in HDX. In HDF, the clearance resulting from the product between ultrafiltration rate and sieving coefficient is increased by increasing the QF aspects of things. So in the presence of a relatively low molecular sieving or membrane. So in HDX, what we try and do is instead of changing the QF or increasing the QF, what we do is the same clearance is achieved in the presence of a much lower QF because of the higher sieving uh, capability of the membrane. Okay. So, of course, when you use a very permeable or a very leaky dialyzer, we have to know that, number one, internal filtration occurs at the beginning of the dialyzer, while back filtration, where solute and water is, goes back into the blood compartment uh, due to the change in pressure, happens. Okay? So, because of this, you need a very good water quality, and uh, usually it is required to use ultra-pure ultra fluid. Okay? And this is just achieved by pyrogen filter on the back of the HD machine so that when standard hemodialysis water goes through this pyrogen filter, it will produce the ultra fluid which is going to be safe and, and very low of endotoxin and bacterial uh, byproducts. Evidence very quickly, I'm just going to show you some evidence from number one, our C. Jason, uh, just to basically show the efficacy and safety of expanded hemodialysis or HDX with the Terranova dialyzer. So you can see very quickly that if you compare it with a uh, high flux membrane, for example, you can see that the middle molecules cleared are much more when you're using the Terranova as compared to the high flux membrane. Okay, what about another? This one is another one, performance of hemodialysis using a, a Terranova dialyzer. You can see that, you know, if they compare it with a high flux membrane or HDF modality, you can see that with high flux, it looks like the, this paper shows a better clearance of the middle molecules. However, when you look at the 
When it, you compare it to HDF, you can see that the middle molecules are actually um, either equivalent or sometimes even better than HDF. Okay. So what is the conclusion? High retention onset membranes have pore size which are bigger and more uniform in its distribution. Okay. And expandable hemodialysis or HDX is basically hemodialysis using a high retention onset or a middle cutoff membrane. Of course, middle cutoff membranes uh, present a significantly improved sieving curve compared to a, just a high flux membranes, high retention onset value. Uh, and at the same time, they display significantly lower albumin loss than high cutoff membranes, la, allowing safe and long-term applications. So with this, they are able to remove middle molecules similar to or even better than HDF. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.